Hello, this is Kieran from No Code Life. I'm doing a tutorial to show how I have automated part of the process of my weekly newsletter growth lessons. So I started growth lessons in April this year um, and I've been trying to write one issue every week. Um, I found that it was becoming quite time consuming in terms of uh, creating campaign and, and updating my website. So I did a bit of automation in Integrum at which has been really useful and I wanted to show uh, just how it works. So this is what one of my normal weekly emails looks like. Um, there's a brief introduction from me that's got a link to the podcast episode. Then there's the title of the article, uh, a screenshot of the, the website of whoever it is I've interviewed, a picture of the interviewee. Then there's an introduction to the person a bit about their background and then I have a number of growth lessons uh, which I have um, written based on my conversation with them and then at the bottom there's a link to them uh, to their website and there's also uh, an ask a call to action for readers saying please can you retweet um, this tweet uh, and so I will when I send out my email newsletter this tweet is already on my growth lessons timeline ready for them to retweet. So the first thing is it's important to have a fixed format for all your newsletters, otherwise it's very hard to, auto to automate it. Um, also, it makes it easier for, for readers when they're opening up if they know what to expect. Uh, it just takes a little bit of the, the work away for their brain. Um, so I also have a website here, which is just a WordPress website, and this is where people can go and read all the uh, kind of back issues. And it's in very much the same format as the email. And I have a Twitter account here where I post links to the articles and also post graphics and things like that. So the challenge I had, oh, and sorry, I also have uh, MailerLite, which is where I, I send the emails from. So the challenge I had was that I wanted to be able to write the email once and then have it update the website and the Twitter account and create the email in MailerLite rather than having to do it manually each time. Um, and to do that, I use this... Um, Integra map automation here, which I will explain. So previously I was writing all of my posts in kind of a Word document or in my notes app and then copying and pasting the text into MailerLite uh, and then doing the same on my website and then tweeting about it and so on. Uh, this was quite inefficient. Um, so I decided to start writing everything in Airtable instead, which brings several other benefits as well. Um, so this is my posts page where I have the content of, of all the different posts I've written. And you can click on each one and skip through to see all of the ones I've written. So... This has a number of fields, including things like the product image, the founder, the founder's name, um, my introduction and so on. Some of these columns, uh, like the founder's first name, uh, automatically fills. Um, it's not, not very exciting for me that. Um, and then if you click on one of them here, so this is the one that I want to create. This is my latest one. Um, I've got the, the title there. I've got my introduction, which I wrote here. So I discovered that um, one thing I really wanted was that I want to be able to put in things like links and also some text in bold and, and different format in all of the fields. Now, the problem is um, if you use the rich text field in Airtable, you start to get some issues further down the line. Um, because the rich text format doesn't necessarily translate correctly. So I've had to do a few workarounds for those, but I'll show you those in a second. But one key thing is that I've noticed if I want to, I, I need to put two um, line breaks between every paragraph. I can't just have one, otherwise it uh, ignores them. So everything I just put two pa paragraph breaks between, and that seems to work fine. 
So I write all my content in Airtable here. I put in the link to the person's product. I put in their Twitter handle. Um, I upload an image of them. I write their introduction here, a name, uh, the name of their product, an image of their product, um, my own introduction, and right down the bottom, I have, so I have a, a quote uh, that I want to include in the main tweet about them. And I also have, for the first time um, this week, I have a sponsor. So I've added a new sponsor field here. So when I've completed that, I've got a column here, which is called create, and I change that to yes. So that means that when I run my Integra Mat automation, it knows only to run it on rows where this is set to yes. So this is where the magic happens. So Integra Mat, if you haven't used it before, very similar to Zapier, um, essentially you can plug together tons and tons of different apps from all over the web uh, and plug them in together and make them do lots of cool things that otherwise would take a lot of time to do. Um, this looks complicated. Actually, a lot of these are simply workarounds or kind of data cleaning to to get the data in the correct format for later on. So really all we've got here is Airtable, WordPress. Uh, we've got an image creator here. Then we've got Twitter and we've got MailerLite. Um, so everything else in between I will explain, but they are they are not crucial. They are simply workarounds. So the first thing to do is to link up. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to do your... Um, automations in a spiral or swirl like I've done. You can do them in a straight line. I just thought this looked fun. Uh, but it's actually a bit annoying when you start adding more in because it messes it up. So the first thing you do is you get the Airtable um, get the Airtable block for Integra Map, and you need to connect it to your Airtable account. So that's just a matter of clicking add and then you log into your Airtable account and then it's able to access it. So then you choose the base that you want from your list of Airtable bases and you choose what table you want within that. So I want posts and you can put in any kind of formula here to filter the posts you want. So I've said I want the column create to be equal to yes, which is what I've just changed here. Create equals yes. So it should only grab that one row from the table. And just to make sure I've said maximum records is one that it can bring through at any time because I don't want to accidentally um, have it bring in all of my previous posts um, because this actually, this publishes things live onto the internet. It doesn't just save drafts. So the next two things, HTTP, get a file. I discovered um, after doing this that if you so if you have an air table uh, like this where you've got product images uploaded you actually need Integromat to download those images you can't just use the URL uh, later on to upload them to WordPress you actually need Integromat to download those images first from the links and then later on you can upload them to places like WordPress um, or MailerLite uh, so that's all these are doing. So you can only, you need one per image. So this first one is saying, I want the product image URL from Airtable. So if I click in here, you can see you get a list of things that you're able to access in, in this block. And I can go down here and I say, okay, I want the product image. So I could just click on that. Um, but within the product image, I actually just want the URL. So I click that and it gives me the this here, which is then gonna download the image from Airtable. So I did the same thing here for the founder image URL. So it, uh, Integra Mat will then have downloaded those two images. The next three things are called are this um, service called Markdown. Uh, and 
again, this comes as part of Integra Matt. So what Markdown does is it takes the rich text format from Airtable and converts it into HTML because I discovered that uh, by trial and error, I discovered that if I just took the rich text fields from Airtable, the ones where I've got the the links and the and the writing in bold, like this one, uh, the formatting was completely messed up by the time it got to MailerLite. So I realized that actually Airtable rich text is written in Markdown and I want it in HTML. So all this does is it converts the Markdown from Airtable into HTML. So again, uh, like the HTTP apps, I had to do this uh, individually for each paragraph or each section that I want um, as HTML. So I've got Growth Lessons Markdown. So that's the main body where I've written my growth lessons. This is the founder introduction. And then this is my introduction for the email. So I've just got three of those. And the important thing with Integromat is these little numbers here. Um, they correspond to the order that you've done things in. Uh, but you need to remember those. Unfortunately, I don't think you can rename uh, something so it's easy to find. So I just have to know that Markdown 5 is the Growth Lessons Markdown. So I need to know that for later. The next two things are silly, really. Um, but they I discovered that for some reason... Um, it, when it makes the HTML from the markdown, it was putting line breaks, whereas really I wanted a um, paragraph symbol, HTML symbol. So uh, this just finds line breaks and replaces them with the paragraph symbol. And this is the text it's doing on. So that's doing on markdown number four. And I've got another one here doing it markdown number five. Then the next thing is WordPress. So again, just like Airtable, you connect this to your WordPress account just by logging in with your credentials. You are then able to do lots of things on Air on WordPress. So what I wanted to do here was I wanted to create a new blog post. So you can put all the details here and you just click in the box and you have access to all the previous steps. So you can select what you want to go in there. So for the title of the post, I've got the headline coming from Airtable. Uh, for the content, um, I've, I'm using the markdown to HTML because I don't want the original growth lessons markdown because the formatting won't be right. So I want the converted one. So I have to choose the appropriate um, markdown to HTML version here. And same for the excerpt. And I put the status as draft because I don't want to publish it just yet. So that creates a, a post in WordPress. So the next things for WordPress, you can't just put a URL of an image and expect it to show up there. You actually need to create media items from each of those images in the, in the air table. So I've got two of these, um, functions here. So one is create a media item. And this is referencing the oops, can I move this? No, it's not letting me move it. This is referencing the HTTP uh, function that I had just after Airtable, which was downloading the file. Uh, and you can give that picture a title, you can choose what slug it's going to have and you can give it alternative text and things like that. So you can automate all of that. So that's the product name. Did exactly the same thing for the founder image. So again, it's guessing that from the earlier step. And um, the reason I, the reason I created the post first, rather than just doing the media images is because actually when you create the media item, you can then add in the post ID that it's going to be tied to, um, which just makes it all linked together a bit better. So this, um, I can't quite remember why I did this, but maybe it'll come back to me. Um, maybe it'll come back to me in a bit. 
but it's probably not important. Uh, and then the next step is update a post. So I'm updating the post that I create, created um, earlier in the in the cycle because I've now uploaded those media images to WordPress, so they're ready to go. So post ID I want to update is the one that I created in uh, WordPress step two, uh, which you can just select from here. So WordPress two, create a post. Uh, things like the title that I've already put in, I don't need to update, but here I'm updating the content so I know that on my website, I like to I like to have the main image there and then the founder image on the left. Um, so I have got image um, and then I put in some CSS. I actually just copied this from how it was displayed when I make it manually. I just copied the image classes uh, and then replaced the source with the source URL coming from the media items that I've uploaded. Then next it's got the text that is coming from the text parser where I was just replacing some of the HTML, but that originally came from the markdown to HTML, which originally came from Airtable. Uh, and then, so those two text bit uh, sections there, 14 and 15, this is section 14. And then this is section 15, which is the growth, the growth lessons. And then I've got these two links here, which is a link to the founder's Twitter and a link to their website. So that's just here. It's um, an A link. So you've got twitter.com slash and then the founder's Twitter handle. Uh, and then the product link, which is their website link. And then just using the product name. So it's kind of replacing the pertinent parts of the links with dynamic data. And then I actually publish it at this point. So this will appear on my website and the featured ID, uh, featured media comes from one of the media files I uploaded. So the reason I publish the WordPress post immediately while I'm doing this instead of making a draft is because I want to get the final link to that post so that I can tweet it. Now, to get the final link, you actually have to do another step, which is get a post from WordPress. So this simply looks at all the posts and I've given it the post ID again from step two where I created it, and that will return me information such as the link to that post. So I'm going to use that in a second. So the next step here is HTML, CSS to image. So this, um, this is quite cool. It's absolutely not necessary, but I quite like it. So when I do a tweet, it automatically creates an image of a quote from the founder. And so this is dynamically created each time and it attaches that to the tweet. So here you can see this is the tweet from this automated process last time. So it's new, it's got the title, it's got the number of the growth lessons, it's got the title, and then it says thanks to the person. And then it's got a link to the full article here and it's got the image. So this was, this was quite painful. Um, I basically had to create the HTML and CSS from scratch to make um, an image that looks like this one. Uh, so well, that's why it's pretty simple. Um, but so it took a bit of time to do it. But the thing is that now I can churn those out and it will just update the necessary parts of the image. Um, with the dynamic content. So the tweet quote that it's getting is from my air table. So at the end of, after writing a post down here, I have a tweet quote section and I just paste in or type in, um, one of the, the best quotes from the interview. And you put your CSS in here. 
uh, then there are probably simple ways to do this. I actually did it from scratch with HTML and CSS, but there are probably simpler ways or websites where you can just style it how you want and it will output your HTML and CSS. So this actually creates that image. Then the next step, so again, this HTTP, just like the ones before, downloads the image created here so that it's ready to use later on. Then Twitter creates the tweet. So the tweet is creating here is in exactly the same format I just showed you. Uh, it's getting growth lessons number, that's from Airtable, the headline, that's from Airtable, founder Twitter handle is from Airtable, and then the slug it's getting from the get WordPress post that I showed you earlier. And then I'm gonna, it's uploading a file here, and it's just getting that from the HTTP module that was um, previous. So this will actually, so I've just published the WordPress post. This will then tweet about that post with a link to it. And then the next step is MailerLite. So this simply creates a new campaign or a new email, it gives it the subject with the growth, growth lessons number and the headline, again, from Airtable. And then it uploads the campaign content. So this is where it gets a bit tricky. So the campaign ID I want to update is obviously the one I just created. The HTML content, you essentially have to get one of your exist one of your previous emails that you've sent, and you copy and paste all the HTML into this box here. And then you go through and you have to painstakingly find the bits that you need to replace with dynamic content. So for example, it did, so if your email is really complicated, then this is going to be very painful. But for example, the title of the email, uh, again, growth lessons number and, and the headline coming from Airtable. Uh, this is, I think this is my introduction. So that just comes down from, uh, comes from one of the markdown modules that I used the title of the email, then it's the um, product image. So I had already created the email. Um, I, I'd already been sending emails in MailerLite, so I knew the format. So it was just a case of coming in and finding the bits of um, HTML that I needed to replace. So I wouldn't suggest trying to do this from scratch. You definitely need to um, have the format ready to go. Uh, but once you've done this, it will save you lots of time in future. So things like this, five HTML, that's the entire growth lessons section of an email. So that's all of this coming in as HTML. And then the other cool thing is that at the end of my email, I ask people if they will retweet the tweet that I've just created in Integra Mount that's just been posted. And I link to the tweet here uh, so that they can do it. So that's the reason this whole circle goes in that order because I want, need to be able to create the tweet and post it to get the link to that tweet so that I can then include it in my email here. Oh, and the other thing I should mention, uh, you also need to have plain text content for people that um, have a browser that doesn't support uh, HTML, if that exists, or an email, sorry, an email client that doesn't support HTML emails. Um, so you have to do this or you'll get an error. And to make it work, you just need to have this variable here and this variable here, which allows them to either un unsubscribe or view it view the email in browser. If you don't have those things in your plain text content, um, then 
they won't be able to um or you'll get an error you won't you won't be able to create the campaign And then final step. Final step is that it just goes into Airtable, into the original record that it found, and it updates um, posted field to yes, and it turns the create create field back to no. So just so this won't get created next time I run this. So that's how it all works, and I will now show you it in action so back in the air table i've got create set to yes everything is ready to go and posted is unticked so you can you can obviously you can set this to go off at certain intervals or you can set things to trigger it um, but because this is posting live to my website and to twitter um, I tend to just run it from the kind of draft mode so I can watch it and check for any errors. Okay, so if I run the automation, if we look at my campaigns here in MailerLite, uh, a couple of old ones here, but so these are the drafts, a couple of old ones here, um, but in a second you will see the new one that's been created. Okay, so that's been run. So if I look at the website, this is the article just posted and it all looks okay. Uh, sometimes there are problems with formatting, but it's not really a big deal. I can go in and, and correct it. The links work at the bottom, they look fine. If I go to my Twitter, Okay, there's the tweet, so dynamically generated image is that, looks okay. And it's got a link here to the blog, so that all works fine. And then if I go into my campaigns and refresh, so there's the email that's created. and it all looks fine got the new sponsored links here um, and as you can see all the html is here because because i've created it using the html it's taking me to this html view so it's very hard to actually make updates to this once it's made um, but hopefully you won't need to and i'll just check this link works so actually, I'm not sure. I don't think that link does work from this view, but if I preview it, so that takes me to the correct place and I'll just check the link is working to the sponsor. No, it's not. Okay, that's not a problem. I can fix that in the HTML. Um, so it's always worth checking all your links before you send anything because small things can mess up. But overall, uh, it works fine. And I can now schedule that email to send tomorrow. And it's all kind of linked together. And it's definitely saved me a bit of time, although obviously I still have to write the whole thing. Uh, which is the bulk of the work, but this automation allows me to spend more time thinking about what I'm going to write and less time actually posting it online. And in future, I'm hoping to include more, a few more um, steps to this to post it places like LinkedIn and, and Facebook and things like that. Anyway, I hope that was helpful and thanks very much for listening. Um, obviously, reach out to me uh, on the Growth Lessons Twitter or or on my no code live twitter i'm happy to answer any questions